Good afternoon. My name is Barb Arlen Fye. I'm a member of the Pachaman Terrace Planning Committee, who will be your MC for the Pachaman Terrace Peace and Freedom Award Ceremony. We'll begin with our welcome by Father Chuck Adam of St. Ambrose University. Thank you, Barb. As Barb said, my name is Father Chuck Adam. I'm Director of Campus Ministry here at St. Ambrose and Chaplain. And it's a great honor to welcome you all to this celebration, to uh, welcome you to the campus for our Pachaman Terrace Peace and Freedom Award Ceremony. It's an honor for St. Ambrose to host this ceremony. We are especially grateful to partner with the coalition and the other members of the Pachaman Terrace Coalition to honor Jean Vanier and his lifetime commitment to upholding the dignity of every human person and the ideal of community. We're especially happy to host the ceremony because over the years we've enjoyed a wonderful partnership with Larch and Clinton. And also because we are a Catholic and a diocesan university and we celebrate the values of community and as many as you, many of you know and have been a part of, we have a rich tradition of social justice education. I should have mentioned at the beginning, I'm doing this because our president, Sister Joan, was unable to. So I'm very happy in her name and in the name of our university to welcome you all here. Keeping with that tradition, we're delighted to celebrate the extraordinary commitment to humanity that Jean Vanier has showed. And we welcome you in the hopes of being renewed and his work and the work that lies ahead for all of us in peacemaking. Welcome. Tim Stone, a core member from L'Arche in Chicago, will give our opening prayer, the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in given that we receive, it is pardoning that we are pardoned, and in its dying that we are born to external life. Amen. Monsignor Marv Modit, one of the founders of this award, created in 1964, will now present a history of the award. tell how old this award is by my condition. <laughs> I used to run up here and march out in the street. Well, there are many things. I don't usually read speeches, but since it's being translated into French, I want to stay close to text. <clears throat> there are many things that can be said about the history of Pachman Terrace Peace and Freedom Award. After a few initial remarks, I will limit myself to this year's award honoring Jean Vanier and the L'Arche Movement. Father Jack Smith, the late professor of history here at St. Ambrose, was the first to bring up the idea 
of an award based on this wonderful encyclical, which, by the way, is 50 years old now. <clears throat> and uh, by the way, we, we, historians have told us, this is not in the text, historians have told us now that John F. Kennedy was negotiating through the back door with Khrushchev to avoid nuclear war. And the back door was John the 23rd, the author of this encyclical. Charles Tony was the president of CIC. Both are deceased, and I'm not far behind them. <laughs> Even Digger is deceased. I was called the chaplain, but I was doing a lot of background organizing for CIC, Catholic Interracial Council. This event honoring John Vanier and the L'Arche movement would not be taking place were it not for Sister Marjorie Weiser, OSF, a Clinton Franciscan. Is Sister Marjorie here? Not here, she's probably out of the country. <laughs> okay. In France. <clears throat> Sister Marjorie, a French, French teacher at Mount St. Clair College in Clinton, met Vanier and the L'Arche movement in her studies in France. Personally, I had never heard of Jean Vanier or the L'Arche movement until Sister Marjorie visited us at Social Action Department. Four of us then decided uh, to go to Toronto, Canada to meet uh, with uh, Vanier while he was there. So it was Sister Marjorie, Sister Consetta Bendicente, PhJC, Father Larry Brofman, and except for Sister Marjorie, they're all deceased as far as I know. So uh, we visited uh, John Vanier in, in Toronto, Canada. We prayed all the way for wisdom and courage in starting the L'Arche home. Originally, the first L'Arche home was planned for Davenport, Iowa. We were interested in a very beautiful older home on Kirkwood Avenue, today's major site for the Bix Run. We had been discussing this plan with the Scott County Board of Supervisors. One particular supervisor strongly opposed this plan and it died for lack of support. We felt this particular supervisor was opposed to doing business with the Catholic Church, even though it was intended to help people in need. Meanwhile, a Jewish couple, Fred and Ruth Epstein, anybody remember them? Uh, they were the owners of KSTT, which was the hottest station around in those days. They were deeply involved in the civil rights movement and Catholic and racial council. In fact, Fred was the vice president, a Jewish <laughs> man, the vice president of the Catholic and racial council. <laughs> we were very ecumenical. Probably would have been president if you were. If you'd <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't tell the rabbi that. <laughs> So uh, the, the Ecksteins had decided to retire and move to the East Coast. So they donated all their beautiful furniture for the uh, L'Arche homes that we were planning. Sister, since Sister Marjorie and her community were in Clinton, we decided to move our plans to Clinton. We were very puzzled at this time about the turn of events. We had prayed it hard and planned for the house in Davenport. We thought we had a confirmation and an answer to our prayers. Now I understand what God was doing. You heard of writing straight with crooked lines? It turned out that Clinton was the best place for L'Arche. It had the full support of the Clinton Franciscans and ecumenical support as well from other denominations. At the same time, the Social Action Department was starting Project Renewal, a program to assist some of the poorest children and families along the railroad tracks in West Davenport. At about the same time, we had obtained a, a documentary on Vanier and L'Arche. We invited all the social workers in Davenport to come to St. Vincent's and view this documentary. My impression was that they were totally mystified 
by this. Especially Vanier's spirituality. I got the impression they just couldn't figure this out. Why on earth would you want to start something like that? Later, I began to understand God's ways. Clinton was the ideal place for L'Arche, and Davenport was the perfect place for Project Renewal. Both were badly needed, but in different places. Both have had a real history, a great history, and both have a, had a great impact. The last time that Clinton L'Arche was here, Somehow, uh, I can't remember, St. Ambrose was honoring them. And uh, I uh, said a few words. I gave Sister Marjorie all the credit. Well, she got up and gave me too much credit. So that just proves it was not our work. It was God's work. Our annual ceremony includes a litany in which candles are lit in honor of past recipients of the Pachman Terrace Award. Participating in the litany this year are St. Ambrose University students Molly Gabaldo, who is president of Ambrosians for Peace and Justice, Kristen Yupa, vice president of Ambrosians for Peace and Justice, Christine Mattern, large chair of Ambrosians for Peace and Justice, and Tony Raya, an intern for the Davenport Diocese Catholic Campaign for Human Development. John F. Kennedy. John Howard Griffin. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. R. Sergeant Shriver. A. Philip Randolph. Father James Grappi. Saul Olinsky. Dorothy Day. <laughs> Senator Harold Hughes. Don Helder Camara. Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Bishop Thomas Gumbleton. Crystal Lee Sutton. Bishop Ernest Unterkeffler.
George Kennan. Helen M. Caldecott. Cardinal Joseph Bernadine. Bishop Maurice Dingman. Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Eileen Egan. Lorraine Corian McGuire. Maria Julia Hernandez. Cesar Chavez. Father Daniel Berrigan. Jim Wallace. Bishop Samuel Ruiz. Jim and Shelley Douglas. Sister Helen Prejean. Adolfo Perez Esquivel. Monsignor George Higgins. Locke Walissa. Sisters Dorothy Marie and Gwen Hennessy. Reverend Arthur Simon. Don Mosley. Bishop Salim Gasol. Monsignor Marvin Modit. Heldegrin Goss Mayer. Reverend John Deere. Bishop Alvaro Rhino Ramazzini. Kim Bobo. Our speaker today is Joan Mailer. 
L'Arche USA's National Director. Joan has been a member of the L'Arche Portland community in Portland, Oregon since 1988 when she started volunteering to cook dinner in their house and to serve their board of directors. She subsequently also served on the first board of directors of L'Arche USA. Joan came to work full time in L'Arche in 2000 as the Western US Regional Coordinator. She has been serving as National Director since 2007. Joan graduated from UCLA with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and from the University of Washington with a Master's in Health Administration. Prior to joining L'Arche, she worked in public policy and strategy planning for a Group Health Cooperative in Seattle, the State of Alaska Department of Health and Social Services, and for the Providence Health System in Oregon. Joan is married to John Heinen and lives in Portland, Oregon. She is the sister to Anne, a woman with an intellectual disability who now also lives in Portland. Let us welcome Joan. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Maybe if I move this. Well, um, first I have to say what extraordinary men and women you have honored before, and it is a great, great honor to join in that litany. Um, I'm also aware that this weekend our country is commemorating the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Uh, that weekend in 1963 that culminated in that incredible Thank you. Um, the weekend that culminated in the speech of the Reverend Martin Luther King, I have a dream. Uh, the, and he shared in that speech, of course, his dream, his vision for a world that one day when all of God's children um, would live in freedom, would be free at last. So it seems to me that those resonate in our gathering today as well. I need to begin with some brief thank yous. First to Barb, where did you go, Barb? Uh, Arlen Fai, um, for that lovely series of articles that she prepared in the Catholic Messenger and the interview with Jean Vanier and all of her work in organizing this day. Thank you. As I said to Barb, I learned quite a bit from those articles, by the way, as well. Uh, to the members of the Pachamenteris Coalition for selecting Jean Vanier for your Peace and Freedom Award, and to Bishop Amos and Barb for traveling those thousands of miles to Trolibroy, that small village in France where Jean Van Vanier lives, still lives today. Uh, it sounds like you had a good time. Uh, I lastly want to thank everyone who came today, including a number from our large communities in our central region. And maybe you can just put your hands up from Larsh and Clinton. Ah, yes, great. Ah, Larsh Chicago. Larsh Kansas City. All right, and where is Larch St. Louis? Ah, back there. Um, any community that I've missed? I ah, <laughs> and Clinton, Iowa, right here. Um, I also want to. <laughs> I. Uh, <laughs> Jacksonville. Molly, also from Larson Jacksonville. Thank you. I also want to thank all of you who've come today who maybe don't know very much about Larsh. Maybe you've read the recent articles in the Quad City paper, or Barb's articles, or, or maybe you've just heard something about Larsh and the life of Jean Vanier that's touched you. So I'm grateful that you've come. Thank you for being here. So I've been asked to say a few words about L'Arche, 
and then to talk more specifically about how the life and work of Jean Vanier inspire the life and work of L'Arche in the United States today. Oh, I've got the clicker. <laughs> okay, so what is L'Arche? First off, there's the name. It's, a, it's a, one of those foreign words, L'Arche. Let's say it together. L'Arche. Ah, that's beautiful. Very, very good. <laughs> um, French for the Ark. I think you probably all knew that, that boat that carried people and animals to safety those many, many years ago. Um, but what is L'Arche today? Are we a home? Are we a collection of homes? Are we a workshop? Are we a good social service agency? Uh, I think we're all of those things. We strive to be all of those things. But more importantly, as our identity statement says, we're people. We are people with and without intellectual disabilities, sharing life in communities that belong to an international federation. Mutual relationships and trust in God are at the very heart of our journey together. We celebrate the unique value of every person and our need for one another. Uh, the last I checked, which was the other day, I think we have about 144 large communities in about 35 countries around the world, but we never quite know. Uh, uh, I think we do know that in the United States we have 18 large communities in places as diverse as Seattle, Washington, Mobile, Alabama, Kansas City, Washington, D.C., and of course here in neighboring Clinton, Iowa. How many of you have ever been to a large community? Hands up. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Well, if you've had a chance to visit or spend time in a large community, I believe that you will have left having experienced people sharing in the very everydayness of life. I don't think that's a word. The everydayliness of life eating and working and resting and praying and playing, not as clients and staff, but as friends and companions. If you hang around long enough, you might find yourself, uh, you might notice that this way of sharing life can affect you as well. Oops, I think I've jumped ahead, there we go. Uh, you might find yourself slowing down you might find yourself more present to others, more able to accept weakness, weakness in others and weakness, your own weakness. And feeling that you are loved not for what you do or for how much you make, but for who you are. So how does the life and work of Jean Vanier inspire the life and work of L'Arche in the United States? I first want to comment on how I think we're inspired personally by Jean, and then share a bit about how we're inspired organizationally. I think that one reason that Jean inspires us is because we recognize that he is a person like so, so many of us who is searching. I first met Jean on a footpath on a college campus in Quebec City back in 1993. I was attending an international meeting of L'Arche and all of the other participants were already in the meeting hall. Uh, and as usual, I was running a little late. So I was approaching the hall from one direction and lo and behold, Jean Vanier is approaching the hall from the other direction. And I thought, oh my, I think we're gonna meet. <laughs> uh, and indeed, we did meet in the intersection of those paths on the way to the hall. My heart was pounding. What would I say to Jean Vanier? Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, uh, never a man for small talk, just leaned downward. He's quite tall, and you've probably noticed I'm not. <laughs> leaned downward put his arm around my shoulder, 
and simply asked, do you love Jesus? He didn't ask where I was from. He didn't ask my name. He asked if I loved Jesus. Let's see if I can get the right slide now. Ah, good. Okay. Large for Jean has been a pathway into the heart of Jesus. Jean was searching for Jesus those many years ago when he left the Navy as a young man. And later, as a philosophy professor in Toronto, when he visited his mentor, Father Thomas, in this village of Trolley. What I believe has inspired and touched so many of us about Jean's life is that he's remained faithful to his initial call and that he's found Jesus through his relationships with Raphael, with Philippe, and with so many others who too often live on the edges of our society. In a world where speed and noise and flashing headlines can overwhelm our senses, Jean's life inspires us because he, a, a philosopher and a son of privilege, has lived his search for Jesus quietly and simply and with humility. Today, people called to Larche may, like Jean, be searching for a way to explore their faith. Others may be searching for acceptance, for friendship, or simply to serve others for a little while. We hope in Larche that through true friendship with people who are different from themselves, they come to find in Larche that they are loved and that they belong. They belong and have a place not just in their Larche community, but they belong in their world. I wanted to share a quick story about belonging uh, from one of my personal mentors. A few years ago, I drove a couple of hours to visit one of our communities. I hadn't been there for many months, and I arrived just in time for Friday worship. The small chapel in the community was packed, but I managed to spy a seat next to Ricky D. Uh, Ricky gave me this sort of sideward, uh, squinty glance and said, oh, hi. I've been saving this place for you. I've been saving this place for you. I'm really quite certain that Ricky had no idea I was coming. <laughs> but of course, I felt very special in that moment. And as I got to know him better, I understood that Ricky has made many, many people feel special in his life and in his very big heart. And in this and so many other ways, Ricky has been for me a professor of love. And in Larsh, he's found tenure. So how is Larsh inspired organizationally by Jean's life and work? Uh, I think we can spend days talking about how Jean has inspired us. Uh, but I wanted to mention three. To continue beginning. Jean, as I think you've read and you may hear later, calls himself a beginner, not a founder. He didn't have a detailed strategic plan uh, when he founded the first community, when he welcomed Raphael and Philippe. Uh, and the conditions for people with disabilities in the United States have changed a lot, of course, over the past 50 years since Larsh began, and thankfully much, much for the better. And it takes a bit more planning and more structure to begin a large community today than it did in 1964. Nevertheless, Larsh USA is committed to finding the ways and the resources to respond to the cry that remains urgent in this country for loving homes and for lasting friendship with people with intellectual disabilities. And I need to say that this photo is of Larsh in Atlanta, which is our newest community of Larsh in the United States. Secondly, Jean inspires us to learn and to teach. Jean is a learner and a teacher. Jean Vanier has given many, many talks and written many books over the years about what he has learned in his life in L'Arche and in our sister organization, Faith and Light. And I recommend his books to you. Uh, one thing that Jean has revealed pretty openly is that L'Arche is not perfect. 
There are times when I wish we were a little more perfect, but we're not. But Larsh has taught Jean and so many others of us about the transformative gift of sharing life with people who are not so skilled at hiding their vulnerabilities. For this reason, Larsh USA focuses much of our work on recruiting motivated people to come to this life, to share in this life with us, and providing retreats and trainings and other supports to help them reflect on what they're experiencing in community and to deepen and sustain their commitment in Larsh. Lastly, Larsh inspires us to be engaged in our world. Jean has always had a global vision. While Larche began in a small rural village in France, Jean Vanier has always been concerned about our larger world. He's always seen Larche as being linked to other important movements for peace and for human rights. Larche USA must also look outside of ourselves uh, and add our voices more intentionally to those of others, be it for expanding access to healthcare for the poor, for celebrating the gifts of people with disabilities in our world, or for interreligious understanding. Our communities, like your coalition, will celebrate our 50th anniversary next year. And we intend to take this opportunity, following your example, to step out and to work with others more intentionally in some exciting new ways. And I don't know this gentleman. Does anybody know who is in this photo? I believe he may be from Boston. No. Okay. Harbor House. No, 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 okay. <laughs> anyway, but serving in a soup kitchen in his town. Um, so, last to say thank you. Thank you again to the Pachaman Terrace Coalition for honoring Jean Vanier and for Larche with this award. Blessings on the important work that you do to bring peace and justice to the Quad Cities. Thank you. On July 7th, Bishop Martin Amos and myself traveled to France to present the Pachaman Terrace Peace and Freedom Award to Jean Vanier. Because Jean no longer travels overseas, we will view an excerpt of the ceremony in France that shows Jean's acceptance speech. <laughs> Vous avez fait quelque chose d'extraordinaire. Peut-être vous mettez l'éclairage sur moi. Mais l'éclairage, il est surtout sur les personnes euh, dans le besoin. Et pour ça, je tiens à vous remercier. Moi, j'ai été un, un, un débutant. I don't know whether I'm a founder. Je ne sais pas si je suis un fondateur. I know I'm a beginner. Je suis un débutant. And maybe I'll always be a yeah. beginner. Et peut-être toute ma vie je ne serai qu'un débutant. But the mystery is there. People with disabilities are the most oppressed people of our world. Les personnes avec un handicap sont les personnes les plus opprimées de notre monde. And that for Et ceci depuis It des années. C'est difficile à croire. The pain and the la souffrance et la pression qu'elles vivent. If Rash exists, it's because somewhere Saint Paul has said that God has chosen the foolish and the weak to confound the strong and the powerful. Si Rash existe, c'est certainement à cause des mots de Saint Paul qui a dit. Dieu a choisi les fous et les faibles pour confondre les soi-disant forts et les puissants. C'est un mystère. Dieu a choisi ceux qui sont fragiles. Aka Pama, qui est un grand thinker américain, 
Robert Palmer, qui est un grand penseur américain, says that the danger of our society is to see that people and children are an emptiness which we should fill. Dit que le danger de notre société, c'est de voir les personnes et les enfants comme un vide qui doit être rempli. Instead of seeing in each person, au lieu de voir dans chaque personne, seeds of wisdom, des, des semences de sagesse, that we must listen to, que nous devons écouter. It's true that if I began life in 1964. It was for a work of justice and of truth. C'est vrai que si j'ai démarré l'arche en 1964, c'était comme une œuvre de, de justice et de vérité. In the name of Jesus and the gospel values. Au nom de Jésus et de l'évangile. But 50 years or nearly 50 years living at l'arche has, has changed me. Mais les, les presque 50 ans que j'ai passé à l'Arche m'ont changé. En vivant avec des personnes fragiles, j'ai découvert toute la sagesse de l'amour. La sagesse de la simplicité, de la bonté. Et c'est évident que ceux avec qui j'ai vécu et il est bien évident que cette vie avec ces personnes m'ont appris beaucoup plus que n'importe quel autre, que n'importe quel livre. Elles m'ont appris à accueillir mes propres faiblesses. They have transformed me as I began to live deep relationships with them. Elles m'ont elles m'ont transformé au fur et à mesure que je commençais à vivre avec elles des relations d'amitié mutuelle. Et elles m'ont amené à découvrir toutes les injustices de notre société. Une société où les hommes veulent toujours plus de pouvoir, toujours plus se grimper les échelons. And to and to et le, les addictions à, au succès, la victoire et à la violence. Au lieu de découvrir le cheminement d'une relation avec des personnes qui sont dans le besoin. Jesus calls us to an extraordinary beatitude. Jésus nous appelle à une béatitude extraordinaire. The beatitude of eating with those outside of our group and our clan who give security and comfort. La béatitude de manger avec ceux en dehors de notre clan, en dehors de notre groupe qui, lui, nous donne assurance et sécurité. De manger avec les pauvres, les boiteux, les handicapés, les aveugles. Tous ceux qui sont à la marge de notre société. Et manger à la même table dans le langage biblique, c'est devenir ami. Et la paix ne vient pas quand, euh, seulement quand nous affirmons, lorsque nous croyons que chaque personne humaine est précieuse. But when we begin to leave the security and comfort of our own clan and group. Mais elle arrive quand nous commençons à quitter la sécurité, le confort de notre groupe, de notre clan. In order to meet and become friends with those who are different and who belong to another clan. Afin de d'aller vers et de rencontrer ceux qui appartiennent à un autre clan, un autre groupe, et que l'on devienne ses amis. A few years ago, I was in Chile for faith and light. Il y a quelques, quelques années, j'étais au Chili pour foi et lumière. And going from the airport 
to the city center. Et en allant de l'aéroport jusqu'au centre-ville de Santiago, my drive, my driver said to me, mon chauffeur m'a dit, on the left there are the slum areas of Santiago. À gauche, vous pouvez voir tous les, les bidonvilles de Santiago. And on the right are all the rich houses guarded and protected by police and military. Et sur la droite, vous pouvez voir toutes les très riches résidences gardées par l'armée et par euh, la police. Then he said, nobody crosses this road. Il ajouta, personne ne traverse cette route. Everybody is frightened. Parce que tout le monde a peur. I took the risk to leave a normal and conventional life when I began Lash. J'ai pris le risque de quitter une vie normale, une vie conventionnelle, quand j'ai commencé Lash. Encouraged by a holy priest, le Père Thomas Philippe. Encouragé par un saint prêtre, le Père Thomas Philippe. As we began to live, Raphael and Philippe and myself. Lorsque nous avons commencé à vivre avec Raphael, Philippe et moi-même. Je n'avais aucun projet. No J'avais aucune idée we were to go. où nous allions aller. Just live together, Juste vivre ensemble. Eat together, manger ensemble. Work together, travailler ensemble. S'amuser ensemble. And pray together. Et prier ensemble. Over the years, Lash has been led by the beautiful and gentle hand of God. Au fil des années, l'arche a été conduite par la main si douce de Dieu. Je suis euh, émerveillé par la croissance de l'arche. Ce n'est pas moi. C'est le mystère de Dieu. And then so many wonderful men and women from different cultures, churches and religions, or without religion, seeking new ways of peace have come to share their lives with those who are weak and fragile. Et tant d'hommes, de femmes venant de, de cultures, de confessions, de religions différentes, car vous même sans religion du tout, sont euh, venus partager leur vie avec ceux qui sont faibles et fragiles. Ils ont, ces personnes ont été transformées en they've, vivant avec eux. They've discovered the wisdom hidden in the hearts of those who are weak. Ils ont découvert la sagesse cachée dans le cœur de ceux qui sont faibles. And so they have grown too in love and in wisdom. Et ainsi, ils ont grandi en amour et en sagesse. So it is that our community in Belfast. Stands as a sign of unity between two cultures of Northern Ireland. C'est ainsi que notre communauté à Belfast ce, est un signe, un, un, un signe de d'unité entre les deux cultures de l'Irlande du Nord. Our communities in United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and elsewhere, we stand as a sign of unity between people of different churches. Et nos communautés aux États-Unis, au Canada, au Royaume-Uni et ailleurs dans le monde sont des signes entre des personnes de différentes confessions. Et notre petite communauté à Bethléem est un signe d'unité entre les chrétiens et les musulmans, euh, ceci en vivant, en partageant leur, leur vie ensemble. All our communities across the world are a sign of the oneness of the human family. And it's the weak and the poor who call us together to be a sign of peace. Toutes nos communautés sont vraiment un signe d'unité de la famille humaine. Et c'est le pauvre, le faible qui nous appelle euh, à vivre ensemble et à être un signe de paix. Nous sommes appelés à grandir en amour. That love which Paul defines as patience. Un amour qui est fait de patience, service. de service, 
to believe all, to hope all, de croire tout, d'espérer tout, to bear all and accept all, de supporter et d'accepter tout. It's never easy to grow in the spirituality of love and respect for each person. Ce n'est jamais facile de croître, de grandir dans la spiritualité du respect de l'autre. A spirituality that flows from the heart of God through our churches, through our religions and human wisdom. Une spiritualité qui vient du cœur de Dieu à travers nos églises, nos religions et notre sagesse humaine. It's the message of Jesus, the message of Mahatma Gandhi and many others who have c'est le message de Jésus, c'est le message de Mahatma Gandhi qui nous appelle à travailler pour la paix et l'unité. Monseigneur Amos, beaucoup de ceux que vous avez honorés par ce prix ont été des héros de la paix. Some have been and some even certains ont été en prison, certains même ont été assassinés pour la Many paix. Of them got the Nobel Prize. Beaucoup d'entre eux ont eu le prix Nobel de la paix. How is it that you can <laughs> Com comment ça peut se faire que vous vous tournez vers nous Juste une bande de fous, bizarres. Le chemin vers la paix que nous avons découvert est très simple. On n'est pas très austère. On ne lutte pas pour être des héros. On mange merveilleusement bien. Nous buvons joyeusement. Lot of Coca -Cola, orange juice. Du Coca-Cola et du jus d'orange. De temps en temps, du vin et de la bière, mais très modérément. We sing loudly. On chante euh, fort. Most of the time out of tune. Mais la plupart du temps, complètement faux. And, and we dance wildly. Et nous dansons beaucoup. And we pray not as much as others. Et nous prions pas autant que les autres. But we have euh, our trust in God. Mais nous avons confiance en Dieu. And that is true. Ça c'est vrai. Feast days, birthdays, all occasions for parties and for fun. Les anniversaires, les fêtes sont tous des occasions de réjouissance. We do pray, but not with long hours. Nous prions, nous prions, c'est vrai, mais pas pendant de très longues heures. Of course, we do work, hard work in our workshops. Bien sûr, nous, faisons, nous travaillons dur dans nos ateliers. We live therapies which are serious and hard work. Et nous vivons des thérapies qui sont sérieuses et qui sont un réel travail. All of us are called to grow in inner peace and wisdom. Nous sommes tous appelés à grandir en paix intérieure et en sagesse. We're all growing in old age. Et tous nous grandissons aussi en âge. There are sometimes heavy days when the wind blows strong. Et quelquefois il y a des, des jours euh, lourds et difficiles quand les vents euh, soufflent fort. And we feel we are floundering. Et nous sentons que nous pataugeons. Mais au dernier moment, la main délicate de Dieu nous sauve. C'est le cœur de l'arche. C'est de se réjouir et de célébrer l'unité. Nous aimerions être des petits signes du royaume de Dieu. Ce royaume d'amour. Like Et pour ça, nous devons apprendre à devenir comme des petits enfants. C'est ça notre secret. De trouver l'enfant en chacun de nous. Un secret too is that we want to live what Jesus asks us to live. 
notre secret, c'est également de désirer vivre ce que Jésus nous demande de vivre. Se laver réciproquement, nous laver les pieds les uns les autres. Comme il l'a fait la veille de mourir. Merci. What an amazing man. John believes that the Poshman Terrace Award belongs to Larsh and not just to him. This celebration today acknowledges John's request for a celebration of Larsh in the U.S. Bishop Amos will now make a presentation to Larsh USA National Director Joan Mailer, followed by a presentation to Larsh Clinton members. When Ken Ferris said that the coalition wanted uh, me to go to Paris to present the award, uh, I said, oh, I don't have to do it. He says, oh, yes, you do. So I did what I had to do, I, you know. <laughs> it was, as you can see, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, just to, to, to visit the, the first home uh, where he took in the first two uh, core members, to, to be there at all of these different communities and to eat with them and talk with them and certainly to sit down and, and be with uh, Jean Vanier, uh, just incredible. You notice the seriousness and at the same time, the lightheartedness uh, that is his. It was a wonderful experience. We were there and um, we're ready to, we're in this big room with lots and lots and lots of people, ready to give him the award. And I looked at Barb and I says, the award. And she says, the award. We left it back in the old place we were staying. <laughs> and so he, he's it, just a delightful man. He says, oh, it's a large moment. Those things happen all the time in large. <laughs> and, and so we presented it to him in the evening uh, at mass. But at this point, I would, I would like to uh, present a, a, a plaque to uh, Larsh USA. Uh, the work that you do is absolutely incredible and wonderful, and as you can see, following in, in the tradition of Jean Vanier, uh, you, you are doing, you are you are bringing peace into our world in your own ways. And so, uh, on behalf of the coalition, we certainly want to present to you and to all the people with whom you work this plaque. Thank you. You're most Thank welcome. You. And John and Becky. We want to uh, present you with a check for $1,000 uh, that we hope you can use for your community. And we hope that it will inspire other people to do the same. I invite the community leaders of all the Larsh communities that are present to come up and receive. We have certificates for all of the Larsh members who are present, and they'll be pre presented at the dance afterwards. And we also have a videotape of the entire um, presentation of the ceremony in France. So if you could all come up, please. Clinton Larsh. In St. Louis, in Kansas. <laughs> and here, you're from. 
from Chicago Clinton, right? Or Chicago Lars. Great. Thank you very much. Oh, she wants to say a few words. Christina. The reason I came today because I think Chamba is a very wonderful man. I was born with Down syndrome. I was living with love for 11 years and not be pushed away. Sometimes I'm still getting life. My brother and I jump are telling me because he was saturated because I know my family very well and thank you very much. <laughs> the journey is a love of Thank you. And then how about Lars Sch um, St. Louis? And are you with Lars Chicago? Chicago. Okay. I think we get, and then we gave that to Christina. She's got it right now. <laughs> she took it for you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, for being here with us. We appreciate it. And then Lars, Kansas City. Too. Okay, you've got some words too. Thank you. Um, thank you from, from Lars for, for Kansas City. For a long time, we live in Kansas. And with those people be around us in the world, uh, from, from Lars all of Chicago, thank you for the people there, there for us. They're, they're facing on the great Manas Grenene. He was a great man, he was a helpful person. Thank you for all the people being around us. Thank you. For Kata City, for all of Chicago. Thank you for all the people being there from the fans for all of us. Thank you. Singing is a big part of a large celebration. And so core members and assistants from the large communities here today will perform some of their favorite songs for us.
It's time for our closing prayer. Deacon Jeff Schutzley and Annette Lyons, pastoral ministers for the Larsh community in Clinton, will now offer the closing prayer. From the Hebrew scriptures, we read in Psalm 145. I will extol you my God and my King. I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and worthy of much praise, whose grandeur is beyond understanding. One generation praises your deeds to the next and proclaims your mighty works. They speak of the splendor of your majestic glory, tell of your wondrous deeds. 
They speak of the power of your awesome acts and recount your great deeds. They celebrate your abounding goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. Psalm 145 says, from generation to generation, we tell of God's wonderful deeds and we celebrate God's abounding goodness and we joyfully sing of God's justice. Celebration within Larsh is a sign of our hope in God's abounding goodness. From John's book, Community and Growth, we read, forgiveness and celebration are the heart of community. These are the two faces of love. Celebration is a communal experience of joy, a song of thanksgiving. We celebrate the fact of being together. We give thanks for the gifts we have been given. Celebration nourishes us, restores hope, and brings us the strength to live with the suffering and difficulties of everyday life. Celebration is the specific act of a community as people rejoice and give thanks to God, for he has bounded them together. He is looking after them and loves them. We, the large communities, thank all of you gathered here for this celebration, this song of thanksgiving, for God's abounding goodness as we have recounted God's great deeds as lived in large communities throughout the world. And we give thanks to God this day for our beginner, Jean Vanier, who said yes to God's invitation of building God's kingdom through L'Arche. And let us pray. Loving God, we ask you to bless us and keep us in your love. Give us hearts that are open hearts that are humble and gentle, so we may welcome others with tenderness and compassion. Give us hearts full of mercy, so that the poor in spirit may find life, and the suffering may find comfort and peace. Lord, grant freedom and fellowship and unity to all the world. And on the day of your coming, welcome all people into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. This concludes the formal part of our celebration. Please join us now for a public reception with cake and beverages, singing and dancing.